The results are in. The experts agree China will overtake America as the number one most powerful country in the world. But when does that happen and how does that affect your day-to-day -day life? Let's talk about it. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. One of the greatest YouTube videos I've ever watched. Has millions of views. Lots of people are debating it. David is by billionaire investor Ray Dalio. He explains in very simple terms for everybody using historical facts why the American empire is on its downturn and the Chinese empire is on the upturn and what that means for everybody millions of views millions of views actually on the response videos from other youtubers and hundreds of thousands of comments agreeing disagreeing augmenting what he said uh long story short andrew he said that history moves in 250 year old cycles you saw it with denmark you saw it with the uk you saw it as america took over and now it's china's turn wow. but a lot of wow. people are saying when will that happen where is america in its 250 year old empire cycle for upside and downside some people think we got 20 years left some people think we got 50 100 some people think we got 200 years left well I really want to ask the questions, guys, should people be panicking? Does that mean their life is going to go to trash or does that mean their kids, kids life would go to trash? And maybe is America losing a little bit of its dominance actually a good thing for America? Right. Well, real quick, guys. Number one, nobody knows when it's going to happen fully. So there's like we said, you know, the classic sort of blue collar attitude be like hey man that thing gonna happen in 150 years we're just living our lives let's get lit <laughs> well let me tell you this if you think you got a lot of time and you're chilling it, it might speed up a little bit <laughs> right but some people you know literally some people like to kick the can down to other generations i mean 100 years no problem it, it's turns sort of like 30. the environment and pollution stuff some people are just like hey man my great great grandson gonna be drinking green water point number two a lot of people have to understand when it comes to macroeconomic things it's like these gigantic boats manned by millions of people like the bigger than any actual boat right they're racing in the water so let's say for example one boat and let's say that's the chinese boat overtakes like the american boat by a little bit on a race but that boat is like sh not structured as fun or it's not a great boat to be in or you're in the hull of that boat working like one of the cruddy jobs it's gonna like not only be way better to be on like the u.s cruise ship that like slightly slipped behind in the race it could even be better to be on the um deck of like a tiny luxury tugboat Let's just say, for example, you're one of the richest people in Kazakhstan. No offense, but like Shout it's out to our fans not a powerful country. Really no chances of it becoming powerful in sight. Right. But you could still be having a much better time than being on the hull of the global winning ship. And here's why that's exactly why you should not worry, because if you look at the former empires now, which are still very good countries, Denmark and Great Britain, look at them. They're still actually really good countries. Now, they might not have the opportunities quite like America, and they might not have the innovation and all these other things, but I guarantee you some people in Denmark really like their, like their life way more than in America. Right, and they no longer have to dictate what happens around the globe through force or through Dude, force negotiation. These former empires are not trash countries. They're not like dystopian futures where everybody's living in a shack. Obviously, if but, they were, that what, would be what, like reason to worry, what by if the way. somebody was like, so you're saying my life's not going to change even more than 5%, but America won't be able to do whatever it wants to whoever it wants anymore. I don't know if I can live like that. <laughs> you know what the most American thing is? It's like Ricky Bobby, you know, where he's like, you know, if you're not first, you're last. It, it doesn't work like you know there's one right. there's there's silver right there's bronze there's even one there's one a one b you know what i mean like there's so much it doesn't just because america loses its dominance doesn't mean that yeah. china takes over and overtakes that's why i don't like that language it's very very hostile and it makes people think like chinese people are going to be mean to them or chinese yeah. troops are going to invade hawaii basically some people to like extend the empire things you know what i mean they want to like characterize one side as evil another side is all you know right and moral and let me just tell you things guys even if you go to europe which is like generally more pro white because they're white as well they like just see a lot more gray area and a lot of things guys like when we're talking about like the shifts of empires and stuff ray dalio he doesn't really assign like morality to anything he's just like yo listen this just happens dude i, I i'm gonna be 100 percent real i could think of a lot of other countries that you would not want taking over america than than chinese people coming right. in yo david it's kind of funny do you think some asian guys are like yes thank you ray dalio in 30 years asian guys are going to be more desirable because we're going to take over <laughs> 
Yo, what if China was the first country to become the world's most powerful country and uh, women was not, were not that interested in the men? I'll tell you this. That would think, be, it would be breaking the, the Dalio cycle from Denmark guys, to UK to America. Though. Guys, uh, soft power, hard power, uh, everything. Dude, it, it has a lot power. to do with, it, back to the cruise ship analogy, guys. It has a lot to do with collectivism versus individualism versus neoliberalism. There's a lot of like these different uh, sort of terminologies that, you know, people who are into sociology and this type of thing understand so I, I want to address some people who out there are like hey i know you guys are chinese american and you guys like to visit china you guys are probably really happy to hear this news i'm like first of all actually i'm not because i was born and raised in america i live in america i plan on living in america for like the rest of my life so i i want to see america succeed i actually believe in the american spirit and american capabilities I just am not sure like if we're all gonna get together and actually do the things we need to do. But I believe that we totally have the capabilities yeah. to. And after Ray Dalio made this crazy like fancy video, he does say at the very end, the reason that I'm saying all this is to point out different metric indicator sliders that we could either improve on or we could like let them fall down and, and, and devolve. And because he was saying that, that indicators you know, the 200 year moving average or whatever, you know, a lot of people use 200 day in trading stocks. It looks bearish. They, these indicators like education, security, corruption, they look like they're sliding backwards. If we address them, we can stay on top. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're evaluating somebody's health, right? You're not just taking their blood pressure, but you're also asking them, hey, what's your diet? What's your exercise uh, routine look like? All these other questions when you're evaluating the health, evaluating the health of somebody, whether you're taking their blood pressure or asking them about their diet, it's the same thing as evaluating the health of an empire, right? Because you need to see, right, all these categories and where they rank, because it's not just one thing. It's not just GDP, guys. Do not get tricked by this whole GDP thing where like China's gonna take over America's GDP and then everything changes. It's like, well, I don't know, that might've already happened to be honest, so. I mean, you're talking about 1.4 billion hardworking, either nerds or like farmers, People who have jobs. Yeah, they're people who are just like, they're just really productive. Yeah. I did see a funny comment that was like, Ray Dalio, you bought America when it was going up. You shorted America going down. And now you're buying emerging markets in the East. You slimy, globalist, non-loyal to these stripes and stars. Turd piece. Now, that is, you know, Ray Dalio is a billionaire. And he definitely, uh, you know... <laughs> And I think some people will have some things to say about how he made his money. Um, yeah, I think he, I mean, he, pre he, he predicts, uh, you know, a lot of investment is just predicting things. Whether you hope they go up or go down, you just hope you predict it right. Regardless, Ray Dalio is a really smart dude. He understands history. And a lot of people uh, that study history are probably going to agree. But I think that it's just like, he's trying to warn us. So I don't think the message is wrong. But I do think that means like for us, the regular citizen, people who are not super rich, like we have to like maybe start thinking about like, what can we do? Not that we, it's, it's our responsibility as an individual, but maybe just kind of shape up your act a little bit or, or just do the things you need to do. Just make sure you do the things you need to do. How about that? Is that easy? Because all he says, David, this is all he says at the end. He says, what can you do? Here's two things, guys. Make more than you spend. Produce more than you spend, guys, and then just be nice to each other. That's it. Right. He talks a lot about education, too. Yeah. But it's really system. simple. It's just like, don't buy so much stuff on credit that won't make you money. If it's a business investment, yeah, do that on credit. But Right. I mean, listen, guys, 250-year-old cycles, where are we? Some people think America became dominant in 1900. Some people think it became dominant in 1800. Where are we in the cycle? You know, who knows? Do you even believe in the cycle? Who knows? Does it even matter to your average middle class person who's more concerned with the sphere of their own life than these gigantic like Olympic medal count, you know, macroeconomic indicators? Who knows, man? And to be honest, I think as Asian Americans, the only thing that we might have to worry about is maybe some uh, increased resentment because... I don't think everybody understands this whole cruise ship analogy, you know, like it depends on where you are in the cruise ship and how that cruise ship is structured and the distribution. Is it heavily in the middle class? Is it heavily top weighted, bottom weighted? Who knows? But basically, guys, um, I do think that Asians need to keep in mind that like for sure it, it probably does lead to like uh, some some you, you getting treated better in some contexts like at the bank and then being treated like worse potentially in the streets. Yeah. Yeah. I think it will breed 
some more anti, particularly anti-Chinese sentiment because it will be seen and China will even be painted more and more as a rival that is going to rule America. It's not going to rule America, it's guys. Not, the, it's the, not the, like that. Well, the Trust dynamics me. of the world are so different yes. now. And by the way, when the UK uh, supplanted Denmark and then America supplanted the UK, everybody was still friendly. Now, some people would say, okay, those were all Anglo countries. Obviously, Chinese being Asians, uh, how does it fit into it? I do think it complicates it a little bit because some people, there's that racial dynamic. However, America is a very mixed country and actually contributing to the American empire has been a lot of Asians or Chinese people too. So the world is really different. I do not think that even this switch over or transition or take over is like a war. It's guys. not going to be red it's dawn not, stop. at all. That's my opinion. Some people are going to be like, you fun, bro. You just trying to get us relaxed. So you're you trying to butter try. me up, trying to butter me up so you can kick down my door and serve me a Jan Bing. No, man. I no. don't want the Sichuan peppercorns. No, Ricky Bobby. Guys, I'm I'm with America. I'm bullish on America. I think we just need to do what we need to do. All right, guys. I saw Frank's Red Hot Sauce's 20, 2030 lineup. It's all got the Sichuan peppercorns and the They're, Frank's Red. They replacing Frank's Red Hot with Sri Racha. Ow! All right, guys. Uh, listen, guys, it's all jokes. Obviously, these things, who knows, man? We're all just living our lives, trying to be happy on this earth. But yeah, there are some like larger things that dictate and, you know, puppet master things that, you know, it's hard to understand. Let us know in the comment section below. Did you watch Ray Dalio's video? If you agree or disagree with it, if you agree with it, does America got 20, 50, 100, or 150 years left? Should we just keep partying in the USA? Let us know in the comment section. Until next time, we out. Peace. Party in the USA.